YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. The J11 by XK, this is the A100. This thing flies with differential thrust and an elevator, which is really nice. Obviously we turn it on and then we turn this thing on. There's a little on switch, got a 300 milliamp LiPo and then throttle all the way up and throttle all the way down to arm the plane. Got just a little bit of wind coming from this direction. We'll see if we can do wheels up, wheels down, elevator up, down, everything seems to be working. Got a little bit of roll, flying pretty good so far. Wants to roll to the left a lot more than the right. Probably a trim thing we can fix. Oh, except there's no trim. Sorry, I'll bring it back closer. This thing flies pretty good. We had two that we reviewed earlier and they were horrible and pretty much garbage, already broken. One of them didn't ever bind and the other one is in three pieces. XK is the way to go, guys. If you wanna have a measure of success, even in a cheap plane, look at this thing. It's flying well, it's not dead calm, but it's, uh, you know, pretty calm. Not an unlimited amount of power. Here's 100%, let's see if I can, obviously I can't do a loop. Flies, it flies somewhat consistently. Feels like the, um, that is about as narrow a turn as you can make. Keeping in mind differential thrust, you do have to have throttle to make it turn. So as I give it throttle, it turns. Now it'll turn this way on a dime. You see how sharp it is? And there's not much gliding because you kind of lose control of your roll. Whoa, let's see how bad the damage was. Kind of reminds me of a jet ski. If you've ever flown a jet ski, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, it looks like the nose gear popped off and it's right here. Jeez, oh, hold the nose of that, please. Grass. Yeah, the grass just got stuck in there like a paper clip because it's got a little turn on it. Okay, let's actually, let's take the landing gear out because I think it looks pretty good without. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if I can correct some of that error. These things went in and out really easy, and you can see virtually no damage on the airframe, and I pretty much nosedived it into the ground. Thing I like about XK is that they just work. They generally do. They work out some of the, the kinks. There was a small hair in that side. I wonder if that was in there before. Hmm. Huh. That would explain why one side would work better than the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were talking about hand launching this. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust it more like this because then the props are further from my hand. Full throttle and just give it a toss. And the auto leveling does its job. Ooh, but the mm -hmm. elevator wasn't really responding very well. So we'll see how this goes. We'll pause it. Yeah. Okay, so everything is still working fine. Looks like the elevator is definitely working. See how slow it takes to come yeah. up to speed? I click that button. See how slow it is? It's just kind of weird. But it's definitely like when you have throttle, the stabilization works. So I guess we'll see if we can get it to go a little better. I was just saying how good this works. And then I had the issue with the elevator. You see the elevator? I wonder if this resets the home position. No? because sometimes you can reset the gyro so that it knows what level is. Everything seems solid, except for that little chunk of glue on there. Maybe that was screwing with us, I doubt it. You could run this, you could run this clevis out, or turnbuckle rather. Yeah, see we have plenty up there. Okay. Well, okay. There's down, there's up, there's down. There's full right. There's full left. It does a pretty sharp turn to the left. 
It's a cool looking plane. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't have enough up. See, there we go. See, it's just, it's like if you give it throttle for a while and you hold back the elevator, it's just like, nope, I reject your input. See, like I just, yeah. there's not enough elevator I can give it. I'm just going along and it kind of wants to do one of these and I'm just like, okay, well, that's all I can do. I can either give it more throttle and then sometimes it, if you relax the throttle, it'll kind of go up. And sometimes if you don't relax the throttle, if you give it more, then it'll go up, but you're not really sure what to do. So we'll go see if there's something going on here. Okay. Okay, so that was the first time I knocked a little chunk out of the wing, just this little corner. So I'll stick that in my pocket and I'll just glue that back in. Uh, looks like I did lose the tip of that too, but I don't want to lose the tip that big because you can see it. I almost wonder if, here, hold this camera crew. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm going to try is I'm just going to extend this linkage a little bit and see if I can get, I'd rather have the elevator go up a little bit by default if I have a, a choice about the matter. So I'm just gonna undo this real quick. If I can get the stupid thing to let go. Gosh, get off of there. This little this little ring is really making it hard to pull back. It's like really sticky. Yeah. Okay, so I got it off of there now. So now I'm just gonna basically push this out some. So I'm gonna turn it like this, like I'm loosening. I did that probably, what, like four times, yeah, maybe? maybe? And uh, now I'm gonna put that down on the inside hole, if I can get there, which I was, I was on the inside hole first. Okay, so that's through. So that should make the elevator tend to go up a little bit more, but sometimes the controllers, the flight controllers on these things will overwhelm any sort of mechanical trim that you make. So we'll see. See, it's just a little bit uphill now. So here we go, we'll try it. See, it's just like, <laughs> you get, I think it might have something to do with the angle I'm at. Maybe when it's level, the flight controller can tell that the yacht, you know, this this is gonna go up and down, but when we get at an angle, then it, just, it, it just doesn't know what to do. Yeah. So let's, let's try that, let's fly with that in mind. These little two channel planes, are some of the more challenging planes to fly, which seems ridiculous because it's like, you know, it's like a toy, right? Well, it may be a toy, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be easy to fly. When you only have one way to control it. Yeah, and you I give mean, it the full correct control that, you're sh that you should be giving it. There's only so much you can do. Yeah. And the funny thing is you can hand launch it just no problem. See, I'm losing my elevator. So I'm giving it full throttle and the, that's all I can do. See, it just, it just, it's going out like this. And then I start my turn and I'm trying, I'm trying to give it more throttle to see if it does anything. And then I give it less throttle to see if it does it. And it just keeps descending. And all the while I'm giving it the full elevator and I'm getting a workout doing it too. Yeah. So are you paused? No, I can't. Well, just walk with us this time, camera crew. Okay. They can watch, they can see the grass. Now that we've cut it all, they haven't seen it like this, probably. We just oh, took wow. the hay. So these, these areas are not really in great shape yet, but we wanna try to get it all to like this. And uh, then the hay will actually be more productive. Look like it's an animal that was living there. Hmm. There's all sorts of holes over here. Tons of them. That's nice. It's comforting. Yeah. I'm sure they're not millions of skunks or anything. Okay, so let's simulate what's going on. Turning, full elevator. See how it's stopping? Because it's trying to keep it level. I just don't understand why it would do that when we're in a, when we're in a, a roll like this. It's almost like we're losing all the air. So let's try turning the other way, just see if we get the same impact. See, when I slow down, then it lets me all of a sudden about 50% throttle. But then there then goes. It's just like, what the heck? What are you supposed to do with that? Okay, we'll walk to there now, but we'll pause it. Okay. So you're back? I'm back. All right, so just looking at it again. I just can't. It definitely seems to be working. Unless this thing is getting stalled out under the air load, 
I just don't know what to think. It's really frustrating because I want, it seems like it should be able to fly just fine. Well, it started out. We'll do less throttle. We got it flying. We're going to go slow. See, then it, it's just like, it just noses over. All it is. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no trim. There's no trim. You can't reset level. I'm not sure what to think about this. What do you think I, about it? This has not been the day. I don't know. It this started is, off good. The plane? Yeah. Or the day? <laughs> no, the plane. All right, let's pick it up. Okay. All right, so I think I know what might be going on here and I could be mistaken, but um, do you see how this wing, this plane, when it flies like this, it does all right because the control surface is, is is actually in the airflow. But I think there's a certain point in the speed of this aircraft where it washes right over the rudder to where it's not as effective. Hmm. Because when it's slow, it flies, but when it's fast, it just like nose dives. Okay, so as it's slow, you can see you got elevator authority, but then I, like, I, can't, I can't bring it to. It's like the only way I could get it to go is I have to give it throttle and then it just drops right back down. Like it, like it's trying, it's barometric pressure related. And I know for a fact that this thing doesn't have a barometer in it. <laughs> uh, because as you can see, we have just a little bit of an incline here. And so we went up about 12 feet there. So let's go get it. Okay. So we're gonna try undoing this elevator control arm. And, you know, sometimes you have this with these cheap planes. I'll be honest, I mean, sometimes you find out it's just a little bit too windy and there's hardly any wind. Oh man, we put that in that way. We should have put it in the other way. It would have been a lot easier to undo. Probably gonna break it. We didn't put that one on though, did you? This? Yeah, when you put it together. What are you talking about? I just did this two minutes no, ago. like when we originally set it up, that was factory installed, right? Yeah, this was factory installed. Yeah. I'm just trying to get it to pop out and it's really hard to do with that thing in the way. So I'm just going to go another half turn so it's easier. And I'm going to go to the outside hole. I wonder if it's binding on itself. I know these little cheapy servos can really be sometimes really crappy and other times they can be all right. But this is almost a pretty big control surface for such a small servo. I wonder if that's part of it. So I put that into the outside hole. I believe it was on the inside hole to begin with. So we're gonna try this again. Yep, just feels like it's gonna do it again. See, I, you can't give it more throttle because you're out of throttle and you can't give it more elevator because you're out of elevator. So the only thing you could do is just watch it gracefully crash into the ground at full speed. All right, pause it. Okay, so we're gonna try to film this from a different angle here. Yeah, I don't wanna get my hands chopped. Here we go. I'm gonna press this button, it goes to a flashing. Hey, look at that. I think I'm in full control now. There's no auto leveling, which is pretty cool. Now I can actually control the stinking thing. That's awesome. So when you click that uh, top right trigger, then you actually have full control of it and it's actually fun. You can fly it like an airplane. Look at this, guys. I'm not even thinking about it. I have just plenty of control over every aspect of this plane right at the moment. Look at this. Look how many times I've gone around without even running into the ground violently at full speed. But look, guys, I mean, I have to fly it. I have to fly it, but the thing is like, this doesn't have auto leveling right now when it's flashing like this on the controller. You see it's flashing, guys? Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do. Then when I chop the throttle, I mean, look at that. That's pretty sweet. It still has a little bit of like hokey stabilization. What the heck? Like that? <coughs> oh, I just got a bug. <coughs> oh. oh, gross. Well, protein. Sorry, sorry. <coughs> I promise that's not a COVID cough, guys. 
I would pause, but you're actually flying. <coughs> Man, that was not very fun. I got it right in the windpipe. That is so cool, guys. So the moral of the story is, <clears throat> don't depend on the auto leveling because it sucks. No kidding. But once you get this thing flying, it's pretty awesome. It's porpoising on me. I think maybe I'm running low on battery. No, it's just, just kind of catching the wind. But guys, this thing is not overly hard to fly now. So I'm gonna go way up here and I'll show you what it looks like when you turn on the auto leveling since it likes to crash. Okay, auto leveling's on. I'm back to a solid light. Yeah, screw that. I'm back in the flashy lights. I think it still auto levels. It's almost like a high rate, low rate. Cause look, I mean, look how, look how successful we've been once I press that button. Yeah. So the flashing light is definitely a good thing on this plane. It still seems to be leveling it. When I let go of the sticks, it brings it level. And it looks sweet. So yeah, if you put it in that whatever solid light mode, which is what it comes in, then you're gonna have frustration and infinite crash cycles. But if you can get it to be where it's the flashing light by pressing the upper right trigger, you have ample yaw authority. You have almost a, what appears to be a little bit of roll authority. which is pretty cool. There's a barn swallow chasing me there. It's definitely got a lot of uh, kind of like overreactionary responses when you let go of the controls. So you have to kind of soften your own controls a little bit if you want to make it look cool. It's got plenty of power too. Look at that. That's so cool. Yeah. Going into the wind here. So, all right guys, took us long enough to figure it out and I feel kind of bad because I don't even understand what this other mode is. Is this like, is this like frustrating crash mode right here? Yes. Where the light's solid? Mm -hmm. And then this is not frustrating, awesome mode? Yes. You just didn't get that from the Chango screen. So there you have it guys. So when we go inside, <clears throat> and by the way, the wheels up, wheels down might work better too. Maybe yeah. we should test that quick before it's getting a little bit windy here. It is. But you see, you got this little tip here that got broke off. Oh, yeah. I can't believe that bug flew in my mouth while I was flying. That's just crazy. Well, I mean, I still need to yak to get that thing out of my throat. You kind of talk a lot. See? It won't be bad at all. I just no. broke the tip off. It's a cool looking plane. It is a cool looking plane, and it's really resilient. Look how many times it yeah, just crashed it. Yeah. And the first time was like, nose into the mud. So, I mean, even the, even the rubber's clean again, which is pretty nice. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, this is definitely a keeper. You just have to know to put it in the flashy mode. Yeah, for sure. Whatever mode that is. So guys, without further ado, if you wanna see us put this together, which there's not much to put together, uh, this is mostly just an unboxing and just kind of review of how to set up the batteries and stuff. If you're new to flying, um, maybe not the best option but this is really fun and really inexpensive. So definitely worth trying out. Thanks for watching guys, come back for more. Stay tuned, we'll do the unbox next. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We haven't opened a garbage bag for a while. We're gonna do it right now. This garbage bag is extra special. There's all this extra room here. There may have been three boxes attached, but we're only gonna do one today. Don't get greedy, YouTube. Ugh. So I already peeled off two, but they will be saved for a later day. Ooh, what do we have here? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What? Okay. Evidently there was four. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. You guys get to wait to see that one. <laughs> so this is the XK SU-27, which looks pretty sweet on this. It's a J-11 fighter is what the XK company has called it. This is in gray, which makes me smile because yellow looks really ridiculous. Yes. So I don't know which one's gray. See this one. one. Oh, no, wait. This one or this one. 
So I guess we'll find out. It doesn't really matter because it's not gonna matter until we get it out. We have flown a variety of different XK products. It's the J11, it's on the top. What? There's a check mark. Oh, J11, yellow yeah. or gray. Oh, SU27 is, it's, they do the combination packaging, guys. Yeah. So my apologies. Um, I thought that was a little bit weird. Cause not at all confusing. Not at all confusing, guys. But when you order it from the website, you'll be ordering the correct item. So obviously we'll link below like we always do and just show you what to expect from the uh, Chinese brands and other brands. We've had really good luck with XK. Uh, they make some really inexpensive planes that turn out to be actually really good. Um, I mean, they're not like hobby grade. They're more like toy grade, but still they're really cool. I would have died for something like this as a kid. Okay, here we go. Ooh. So this one's obviously the gray one. Uh, typical Changlish instructions, probably just barely articulate what needs to be articulated. Um, what is that supposed to mean? Don't throw this. Don't fly. Don't fly while. Storms. Yes, during. Well, I was thinking it was like during fishing like events. <laughs> so do not do these things to the don't battery. Use, don't use sad batteries. Don't fly simulators. Simulators are dangerous. And no desert islands, okay? No flying in desert islands. What else? What else do we have covered. here? Well, anyway, uh, it's gonna be like every other one, so we'll see how this turns out. Got the kind of the pseudo standard uh, spring-loaded mode to stick over here. There is no rudder. The rudder and elevator are over here. Of course, the rudder in this case isn't really a rudder, it's differential thrust. The plane looks a lot nicer than I thought it was gonna look. Mm -hmm. That actually looks pretty cool. I really like the way it looks, guys. Bigger than expected props. I bet it's gonna actually have some pretty significant power. And look at this, this is really cool. Look how there's a linkage for the servo is up here. And that's for the elevator, of course. And then the differential thrust by differing the speeds of the motor rotation. We're gonna create that yaw which is going to, of course, take your plane and you know move it like this, then the elevator is gonna do this. And the other thing that happens when you yaw a plane, it's not just a flat, it's not just a flat turn. It's going to speed up this wing, which will produce more lift, and this wing will slow down in a relative fashion, and it will drop. So it yaws and rolls the plane. So it makes for a, a bit of a coordinated turn, which is pretty cool. And really sturdy, I mean, these things, I, I don't want to hit the nose, but feel the nose. It's, it's see, it's, it's, oh. it's got a little air space so it can catch any goodies in there. You definitely um, want to leave an air space. That's important. It is. It is important. But uh, this plane is small enough. Oh, obviously, the batteries are in here. Uh, how many did we get? We got the kind of the low C connector style. It looks like 300 milliamp hour 1S, one cell in series, which is sort of, a counterproductive way of articulating that, but look how tight and square that is. That's really nice. When they're like that, that's usually a good sign. Uh, looks like there's some landing gear insert points there, um, but I haven't found those yet. Oh, here they are. Okay, so we've got this uh, USB style charger. It's the dual charger style. Um, really actually a pretty nice little value added uh, set up there. So you get two, and then a little drum style connector comes off of the USB port plugs in here, and then of course this will plug in here. So we'll go ahead and get that started charging after we go over the landing gear. Of course, the landing gear comes with a spare prop. Uh, please do note that the props are labeled A3 and B3, okay? So whatever one you take off, if you give it throttle and it doesn't blow, if it pushes away from, you know, if it pushes that way, it's wrong, okay? So differential thrust is just gonna it's still only gonna push this way. It's just gonna push more or less. It's not gonna push that way to make it spin like this, okay guys? But I like that, I'm really surprised by the scale lines of this thing. It's really pretty. It looks like the battery's gonna go in there just fine. Only the one battery? Yep, only one battery on this one. There might be more in the controller though. That's Sometimes true. we find them in the controllers and it's got an on off switch here, so don't be deceived by that. But I really actually, mm -hmm. really like the way that that looks. That's really cool. So, at any rate, we're gonna go ahead and, I really don't wanna put the landing gear in because it's gonna be so uggo. Yeah, I know. But at the same time, 
Some people might be wheels up, wheels down kind of guys or girls or gals or whatever. <clears throat> so let's look at this. Oh, did you see that? Look, they're just so flexible. You can't hardly break these things. Okay, so you stuff that in there and you stuff that in there. No screws involved, which is super nice. Obviously, you're not gonna be having any sort of control for ground control beyond that which you can generate from the yaw on a differential thrust. So on a really smooth counter like this, we'll be able to probably yaw the plane just fine, but out on a concrete ground, you're probably not gonna be able to do much yaw. So the key is you just fly, get it in the air, and then you can do your controls much better. Uh, let's go ahead and get this charging and just kind of show the people what it does. Okay. We'll just go over to the, we've got our spectrum stuff over here, which of course is gonna be, you know, like major overkill. So actually let's not use that. Okay. Let's just show the people another alternative choice. Um, we're just gonna pull out this little bag of goodies. Got lots of different adapters here. Oh, look. There's just a regular, this is the one I seem to always get. It's for an Asus tablet. And it looks like on the output here, we've got 5.2 volts at 1.35 amps. And this one doesn't really indicate the input voltage that's desired. So I'm gonna assume that we're okay there. Um, if it says something abnormal, then that's where you need to be a little bit careful. So we'll just find, we have an outlet here. We'll plug it in. And usually when you plug these in, there's, there's either a light here or there's a light here. In this case, there's a light on the charger. And when you plug in this little low C connector, it comes up and charges. Okay, when that light disappears, then that means it's fully charged. So that's pretty awesome. Real easy setup. It'll get you guys where you need to go. Um, if you can't handle such a non-sophisticated charger, you can do something like this. It's a lot more expensive. Uh, obviously, you have to buy that. It's not going to come with the airplane, but you could charge up to four. And then we actually have another charger we're going to be reviewing here pretty quick. I think this thing goes for about the $40 range, and that'll charge up to four separate batteries at separate levels. So it's not a balanced charger. Um, it's not like these different solutions that you've seen me do here like this where that would be actually balanced charging the batteries you would have to have them similarly drained and they would have to be similar sizes to do that off of a more conventional charger so but this is an option that you can do that's in the smart accessories if you follow the links below and it should be in there as a choice but it does come with a charger which is really nice you do have to have your own usb adapter so you could use your smartphone charger or if you have a laptop or something like that, or maybe just a desktop that has a USB plug, that would work fine. But really nice packaging, very sturdy. It's coming from China, so, I mean, I'm not saying it couldn't get broken, but we've never had an XK plane broken. The XK packaging is, is pretty good. It's superior packaging. So when you buy one, you'll be buying it and expecting it to show up in one piece, which is really nice. And that is a legitimate concern. So let's talk about the setup. Obviously we need to turn this on, but you'll notice there's no batteries in there. So just pop off the back. You got four double A's. I am gonna get a marker and mark this and we're gonna pause and come right back and we'll show you what we gotta do. Okay guys, so the G11, we gotta get the batteries in here. First thing I like to do when I get one of these planes is I will label this XK J11. Okay, which is also known as the A100. G11, okay. And then you can see how it says A100 here. That's the XK numbering scheme. Uh, they have like an A-100 or A120 or 124 or whatever. So if you're trying to search for a plane, then you can do that. And uh, obviously you can just scroll through my playlist and you'll see whatever we've reviewed and we've reviewed a lot of planes. So this is a battery from the 787 that had uh, the, the Boeing 787 that had a 300 milliamp hour. So we're just going to use that as well. So we'll be ready to do that. We'll start throwing in the double A's. We usually just get like the cheapest double A's that you can get because we literally have, I don't know, like 50 of these things. Mm -hmm. So if you have better double A's, you might have a little bit longer life expectancy out of your transmitter. Okay. 
Okay, so turn this on, make sure that the lights comes on. Everything seems to be nice and solid. There's a button here, a button here. This is a button, so it flashes to indicate that you're in a probably a high rate mode. And then there is no trim buttons, okay? So my guess is there is actually no trim on this. So we'll plug this thing in. And then we'll stick the battery in as it's intended, like that. Just kind of push the cables in. Really simple. Snap it down. Those snaps, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you have to take these snaps, guys, and you have to take and hold this here and kind of squeeze it out like this to make them re-tighten. Fits in there nicely. Okay, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Okay, we're gonna wait and give it a second. Turn off the transmitter, which is typically faux pas for an airplane. Oh, there's no, there's a power switch on here. Okay, oh. so the transmitter yep. is on first. Flip the power switch, lay it down, give it a second. Is that one you have to arm like? All the way up, all the way down. Or sticks in? No, you can't move the sticks in. Oh, there is a light on here though. You see that? See that? Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna control the plane. I'll turn off the transmitter and then turn it back on. There it goes. See that? So now it's working. Did you see it go from mm -hmm. like the slow flash? To fast. And then it went fast? Yep. Okay, so it's working. You can see the elevator is gonna go up and down. And then this will control the speed of the motors. So you can see how it kind of slips along. Okay. We'll try. There you go. So it's just, it's, it's definitely enough power to uh, travel long and taxi. So that seems to be working pretty good. And then this plane will automatically level. See how it's trying to bring the plane level by putting the elevator down. And it's gonna to try to bring the plane level. And then once it reaches level, it's gonna fly. And then if you have a little bit of throttle, you have to listen to it now. This one's gonna go far, it's gonna go way harder. See how it's, it's trying to correct the plane, okay? See how this one stops? See how that one stops? Then this one stops. It's trying to keep the plane going the same direction. I don't think we could probably fly this inside, can we? Probably not. Feels like it's probably not gonna have enough power. It does fly inside. Uh-oh, we've got an attack. That's, it's, if you had a big enough house, you could fly it inside. <laughs> but uh, that being said, we will hold off on flying this until we can do it in daylight. It's dark now. And I'm really impressed with this thing. I mm -hmm. thought it was gonna be like really crappy, but it's actually really nice. It feels strong, mm -hmm. but it's, it's flexible. And when they get the scale lines close, I like it a lot. This thing should have extended a little bit longer if you look in this image here. It's not that bad though, and they usually don't get the scale lines very good, but XK does a really nice job. And then look at the airfoil here. See this, how it's got that shape like that? That's excellent. That means that with a thin wing that's very light and still made of this really, really uh, forgiving foam, you're gonna get even more lift out of that, which is pretty sweet. So that being said, we will, you guys have probably already seen it fly, but that's the setup, so enjoy. Come back for more, guys. Check the link in the description below. Buy one for yourself. Oh, let's check the uh, high rates real quick. Okay. Okay, so I bet in this manual, it probably tells you what the buttons do. That's probably the only thing this manual is good for. Looks like they wanted us to put this in the other way. I don't know that it really makes a difference, but I'm just gonna do it their way. Okay, so it's supposed to be like that, I guess. Um, okay, so beginners must practice on simulator or experienced guidance to fly. Okay, whatever that means. I'm just looking for the buttons, guys. Sometimes the buttons are, oh, here we go. 
put the plane on a flat surface and accelerate in the wind with the plane reaches a certain speed. Okay, so by the way, this is if you had a mode, uh, a mode one. We have a mode two, which means that our throttle is going to be on the left, okay? And then they're wanting to charge rate at no more than 0.5 amps, which is fine. That's pretty standard. That means you're charging at about like 1.6 C, which is fine. There we go. Rudder, rudder, directional joystick. See this? It says rudder. <laughs> that isn't right. That's the rudder. I don't know what they're talking about because it starts flashing, you know? So that's high rates then. See how it's got more rates? Mm -hmm. So when you see that flashing light, that means it's got higher rates. The other thing is you might be able to press the other button to take it out of the auto leveling mode. So that's what we're gonna try right now. Doesn't seem to change any flashing of lights. Looks like we got the flashing now. No change, so it's gotta be a high rate. So it's just basically gonna give you a little bit more yaw authority. Um, and then of course the elevator is gonna move a little bit further. See, I can't tell a difference. Mm -mm. So anyway, it looks really cool guys. I'm excited to see this thing fly the J11 fighter, which is also known as the A. 100 from XK, really cool looking toy. Can't wait to fly it for you. It's gonna be good on a nice calm day. We're gonna try for, and if it's a not calm day, we'll still fly it anyway, because that's just the way we roll. Come back for more.